<sighs> well, the day has finally got here. <laughs> I've had this big box sitting in my living room for, God, it's been, it might be close to two months now. It's probably a month and a half at least. And it's time that I finally unbox the Zizzo Forte and let's take a look at it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Got these big staples in this thing. Open this baby up and see what we got. I can get rid of this box finally. God, more staples, what the heck? All right. They really box this thing, don't they? Look at those wide tires, guys. All right. There is a lot of padding in here, a lot. Let's try to pull this baby out. Now we need to uh, do the painstaking task of cutting all these zip ties. <laughs> Brand new Zizzo. We are probably going to have to change out this gear, I am assuming, but it doesn't look like it's going to be easily changed out, which is kind of disappointing. For some reason, Zizzo put the plastic underneath. That means I got to undo all of these to get that plastic off of it, which is kind of annoying. I do like the wide tires though. It's a lot wider of a tire. Looks like it's going to definitely be more of a utilitarian bicycle. I guess I don't need it geared really high for utilitarian purposes like hauling groceries and it definitely has a rack and fenders which is really nice. It does have a wider seat. Not sure how comfortable this is going to be until I ride it so we'll find out. It does also have some wider, you know, more comfortable or supposedly more comfortable grips on it. It's got the same eight speed, or no, this is not eight, it's seven speed Revo shift. It does have bolt on wheels, which I like. They're all bolt on. I like that a lot better for a commuter bike. I, the gearing we're gonna probably have to figure out something on. Yeah, I think I'm gonna ride it to work tomorrow and we'll see how this gearing does. For a utility bike, it might be okay. I, don't, I might just leave the gearing the way it is. I don't know. We'll see.
I really wanted to like the Zizzo Forte. I really wanted to like this bicycle. I went into purchasing this bicycle with the thought that I was for sure going to like the bike. I thought it was a beefed up version of the Zizzo Liberté. And I love the Zizzo Liberté, so likewise, logic would suggest that I would like the Forte as well. But this bike has one major fatal flaw that is a deal breaker to me in a lot of respects. And I wanna talk about that. But before we get into that, I wanna tell you about why I wanted the Forte in the first place. A lot of people will probably ask, Brian, you got a Liberté, why the heck do you want a Forte? There's a specific selling feature to the Forte, you know, above all the other models, and that's the fact that it has a 300 pound load capacity on it. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. A lot of you are like, Brian, you're a beanpole. You can't possibly weigh anywhere close to 300 pounds. Why do you want a bicycle that has a 300 pound load capacity on it? Good question. Well, the reason why, guys, is because I carry a lot of weight on my bicycle. And I mean a lot of weight. I, I always fear like I'm overloading my Brompton. Now, I'm probably right at the weight limit with all of my gear and everything loaded on my bicycle. And I don't like being right at the weight limit. The Liberté has a 240 pound load capacity, which is very similar to the Brompton. I wanted a bike that I could load down full of gear, especially on camping trips and stuff like that, and not have to worry about getting anywhere close to the load limit. The bicycle would also appeal to people who are much heavier. If you get a 275 pound beefcake of a guy, beefcake. you know, he can't ride the Brompton. He's already overloading the bike just by riding it not even carrying any kind of luggage or anything. A bike like the Forte would appeal to a person like that because he can ride the bicycle and still be under the weight limit, which is really nice. But that's the major selling feature to the Zizzo Forte is the fact that it can carry a lot more weight. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the similarities of these bicycles. If you've watched my Liberté video, you pretty much know a lot about this bicycle because they are very similar. They have a very similar shape to them. Um, they're identical when it comes to folding. The latching mechanisms are identical. The brakes are identical. The pedals are identical. There's so much that's exactly the same on both bicycles. We're not gonna talk about that stuff though. We're gonna talk about the differences, the key differences. Okay, as you can see, these are very similar in shape, okay? But what makes this one more beefy is the fact that it has these gussets welded in, right, on the seat post and a gusset welded in on the steering post here. You can see that there's an extra piece of welded in metal here and here. You don't have that on the Liberté. If you look at the Liberté, it's a much cleaner looking frame. But they had to reinforce the frame in order to give it that extra load limit. On top of that, the frame itself is made of a thicker gauge aluminum. So the frame itself is much stronger than the frame on the Liberté. The forks on both bikes are different as well. The one on the Forte is actually made of steel, where the one on the Liberté is made of aluminum. So that's one of the reasons why the Liberté is so much lighter. But the steel on the Forte, that makes it stronger. So not only do you have a strong frame, you also have a strong fork as well. So that's the differences in the frames. Now I'm not gonna talk about the differences with the accessories. I mean, obviously the Zizzo Forte comes with a rear rack, it comes with fenders, it comes with a bigger comfortable seat, it comes with comfortable handlebar grips. We're not gonna talk about that stuff just because you can get that stuff for the Liberté too. All you have to do is order that stuff from the Zizzo website and you can put it on the Zizzo Liberté. The same thing with the bigger tires. You could obviously put bigger tires on the Liberté. The only difference is, is that the Zizzo Forte actually has thicker rims or wider rims than the Zizzo Liberté does. The rims on the Zizzo Liberté are definitely more narrow than the rims on the actual Forte. The Forte are more like mountain bike rims where the Liberté are more like road bike rims. They're both double walled, so they're both really strong. It's just one is wider. Now we're gonna talk about the biggest differences between these two bikes and the difference that really just infuriates me when I start thinking about it. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Ugh. Zizzle makes six bicycles. Three on the lower end and three on the upper end. The three on the lower end are Via, Campo, and Faro. 
or Pharaoh, I think. And then the three on the upper end are obviously the number one, which is the Liberté, the number two, which is the Urbano, and the number three, which is the Forte. There's just not too much difference between the Urbano and the Liberté, and there's really not that much difference between both of those bikes and the Forte. But there is one key difference between the Forte and the Urbano and the Liberté, and that is the Liberté and the Urbano pretty much have the same drivetrain, whereas the Forte, for some ungodly reason, Zizzo decided they were going to put the drivetrain on the lower end bikes on the Forte which makes absolutely no sense to me, and I'm just still racking my brain to figure out why. Part of me knows why. I think a lot of it was just to keep the price down. They wanted to keep the Forte since they did do all this extra beefing, and because this has some of the accessories that you actually have to pay extra for on the other bikes, like the fenders and the rack and the seat and all that stuff, you have to pay extra for that stuff. So they're trying to keep the price down. And what they ended up doing was they cheaped out on the drivetrain. Now, if I had a choice in the matter, I'd rather it not came with the fenders or the seat or the rack or any of that crap. I'd rather just order that stuff separately. And I'd rather the bike come with the better drivetrain on it. But for some reason, they just decided, well, I want to keep the price down. So I'm going to put a cheap drivetrain on it. That's aggravating because obviously the drivetrain is much more difficult to uh, change out than a seat and a rack and fenders. So let's look at the drivetrain really quickly. As you can see, Forte has this pro wheel pressed on, I think it's a pressed on gear kind of assembly where the crank arm and everything's built in together or whatever, which is kind of aggravating. Um, that means if you want to be able to change this gear, you have to replace the crank arms as well. Yay! And then they've got the Shimano Turney, the Shimano Turney rear derailleur, which is the bottom barrel. I mean, that is scraping the gunk off the bottom of the barrel component levels for that. I don't know what the chain is, but I shudder to think. And I don't know what the cassette is because it's not really labeled. There's not anything that tells me what brand the cassette actually is. The Liberté, however, has the Shimano Altus rear derailleur system, which is a decent rear derailleur. It's still low line, don't get me wrong. That's still like entry level stuff there. It's just not bottom of the barrel, you know. And of course I put a good gear on it. I put a Vuleta 62 chain ring because I wanted to be able to get a little bit more top speed out of it. But the original ring was a 48 tooth and it did fine. There was no problems with it. It's just that you know, if I want to go faster, obviously I need more of a, a bigger gear on the front. But this system shifts so smoothly. This is also an 8-speed, whereas this is a 7-speed. Every time I turn the shifter on the Liberté, it locks into gear quick, fast, and accurate. I don't think I've ever had a problem with the Liberté not shifting accurately. I've been having so many problems with the shifting on this bicycle, and I've only rode it two days. I've had problems with phantom shifting mostly. It's been shifting up, it's been shifting down, it's been shifting when I don't want it to shift. It's so inaccurate, it's so infuriatingly inaccurate. Now I know what a lot of you guys are gonna say. You're gonna say, well, it just needs an adjustment. Believe me guys, I've been adjusting derailleurs for years and years and years. I know how to set the limit screws, I know how to barrel adjust it perfectly in line. I know how to do all that stuff, okay? If I were to take this to a bike shop tomorrow, they would put it up on a stand and they would go through the gears. Of course, they would probably tell me, uh, you need a little bit of an adjustment. And then they would adjust it a couple turns and go, okay, now you're good. And then they would run it through its gears and they would find out that there's nothing wrong with it. Because the thing works fine when it's on the stand. It's when it comes off of the stand and you get it under a load and you're riding down the road when the problem starts happening. I had this problem this exact same problem that this bike has I had it on another bike that I had that had this exact same derailleur on it the derailleur is junk um, sometimes they work good sometimes they don't I mean I know people that have these that say they work okay but the quality is so hit or miss on them so it's just really difficult to tell whether you'll actually get a good one or not and the problem that I had on my other bike that had this particular derailleur 
I took it to a bike shop and I had them uh, adjust everything up, even though I adjusted it fine. They just made some turns of the barrel screw and, you know, maybe set the limits a little bit. They didn't do much of anything. They just barely did some adjustment on it and it still didn't fix the problem. Then they told me, well, it needed a chain and a rear cassette, even though the chain and the rear cassette weren't that old. Replace that. Didn't fix it. Then we ended up replacing the front gear. And finally, when we finally replaced the derailleur, the thing worked fine. And the derailleur wasn't that old. It had never been crashed. Just like this one, brand new. This derailleur is a piece of crap. It has so much deflection in it, it's not even funny. The spring is really weak. It doesn't hold this chain securely either. So, look, I mean, I'm barely touching this, and this thing. Look at the deflection level of that. And what happens is when you're riding down the road and you're bumping and you're hitting bumps and this is like moving a lot, it basically moves enough to where it actually jumps down a cog. And that's why you're getting that phantom shifting problem. Same thing with the derailleur. It deflects and moves so much it actually shifts gears when you don't want it to. That's why I just hate these cheaper drivetrains because it's like I said, it's a hit or a miss whether you actually get one that'll work or not. And even if you do get one that'll work, it doesn't mean it'll last. The disappointing thing is this bike is meant to be a utilitarian bike. It's meant to carry a lot of weight, which means you're going to be putting a lot of strain on the drivetrain. And for them to cheap out on that drivetrain is just a boneheaded move. If you're going to put a cheap drivetrain on it, at least give us the option on the website to upgrade the drivetrain on it. Because the other two bikes have decent drivetrains. Why shouldn't this one? Why shouldn't one that's built strong have a nice strong drivetrain? I mean, it just makes no sense to me. And I, I ride this bike and I want to enjoy riding it. And I know I could enjoy riding it if it had a better drivetrain. But I couldn't even think about all the good aspects of this bike because it was overshadowed by the fact that the bike shifted like crap. The bike, the gearing was so aggravating and infuriating to me, it completely robbed the joy of riding this bike. Now, it really depends on what kind of rider you are because I know there's gonna be people in the comment section say, hey, I got a Forte and it runs fine for me. Look, it really depends on what kind of rider you are. I mean, if you're one of those people that just folds up your bike, sticks it in the trunk of your car, and rides around the park pond, and you're really not putting the drivetrain under much stress, then you're probably not gonna have a problem. Me, I put the drivetrain under massive stress. If you've watched any of my videos, I am going hard on my bicycles. I mean, I'm really cranking. And that's where I think I have a problem with these cheaper drivetrains is that they just cannot handle the kind of pressure that I'm putting on these bicycles. But if you're a serious cyclist, if you don't want to spend extra money and you're buying a cheaper folding bike, just know that if you buy a Forte, you're going to have to, especially if you're one of those people that likes to commute or you like using your bike all the time and, or you're putting your bike under a lot of stress, you're carrying a lot of weight, you just have to understand that you're probably going to be upgrading that drivetrain. And if you can accept that, then yeah, go ahead and get the bike. I'm going to upgrade the drivetrain on it and it'll be a good bike then. But right now, it's not a good bike. And that makes me sad because it could have been a really, really good bike. And it's just a shame that Zizzo cheaped out on the most important part of it, which is the drivetrain. Yeah, those are my thoughts on the Zizzo Forte. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave it down in the comment and questions section. Slap a like on the video if you like it, guys. And I will talk with you on the next one. Bye-bye.